A good evening to you, the uh, esteemed viewers. We are indeed glad that you have watched us, you've watched Family TV. We are almost close to the end of the week. Today is a Friday, but at least we are grateful that you've watched Family TV from Monday. And every single Friday at exactly 7 p.m., we are right there in your living room, right there on your phone, you who watch us uh, using YouTube or you watch us through the Family TV app. But this is Health Pot. This program is brought to you by Makerere University School of Public Health together with Family TV. And we are basically looking at maternal health and early childhood development. Edwin Austin Makalas is my name. Now, as we all know that Wednesday 16, that, that is uh, Wednesday, it was that day of the African child. And every 16th June, we celebrate this day, the day of the African child. And because our target or our emphasis is on early, child, early childhood development and maternal health, today we want to look at something to do with early childhood. But of course, I cannot do this alone. I'm here with Dr. Olive Kovsinger. Dr. Olive Kovsinje is a researcher, and her research is actually based on what we, in what we call trauma injuries and disabilities. And today she's going to take us through what we call unintentional injuries uh, in children below five years. Unintentional injuries, not intentional injuries, unintentional injuries in children below five years. So, in early childhood, development, our emphasis is uh, we are looking at children below five years. And today, she's going to take us through this topic. Doctor, we are so grateful that we have you today on HealthPort. Thank you. Kindly greet us and viewers. Thank you and good evening, viewers. Yeah, we are indeed. So, uh, Dr. Olive, when we talk about unintentional injuries, how can you break this down? Uh, thank you very much. So, as the word uh, implies, they are unintentional, it means that they are not a result of violence. We have a lot of uh, violence against children, we have child abuse. Now, these are the injuries that are not a result of that. They, are, they used to be called accidental injuries, but we do not like to call them accidental because we believe that they are predictable and they are preventable. So, we say they are unintended. A child, so I'll give you for example, uh, the commonest injury actually that faces children, surprisingly, is road traffic. Children are being harmed uh, because they are on a border border, they're being carried on a bicycle, they're being, or they're in a car that crashes. But typically when we talk about unintentional injuries, we are also referring to things like burns, like falls, like poisoning, uh, like drownings. We're talking about things like um, children sticking things in their ears or their noses, so foreign bodies, or attempting to swallow something like a bottle top and it gets stuck in their throat. So all those are all, um, they are stung or bitten by a dog, so all those are unintentional injuries. And most of these injuries occur right in our homes. Yeah, actually, they are so, so common. But there's something you say that they are predictable. Who predicts these injuries? The, the mother, the caretaker, or the child? <laughs> the, the mother, the caretaker, we researchers, people that look after children should be able to predict these injuries. Because I look at a situation where a child is going to play with friends, and then maybe she gets, um, she gets a bottle top, swallows it, and the mother is not aware. How can she predict this? So, um, so first of all, we know that developmentally, that when children are growing, at a certain age, they have a tendency to put whatever they put their hands on into their mouths. It's a very natural um, instinct. Pick something, stick it in your mouth. So a mother or somebody that looks after babies of that age, toddlers, should be able to anticipate this. In other words, it's predictable. It is not something that takes you by surprise when you say, oh, so when you're looking after children, you want to clear the surface. You want to take away things that children should, could put into their mouths. That's why if you take a good look at toys, toys that have been well manufactured, you'll find that they don't have small pieces that children can take off. And they actually will indicate 
that this toy is not suitable for children under the age of three because they know under the age of three, ten children have that tendency to put small things in their mouth. So we can't predict that. And doctor, on the press conference that you had on Wednesday, there is something you talked about that these unpredictable, uh, unpredictable or unintentional injuries are the sixth cause of death in children. What do you mean by that? And how do they cause death? So this is data from not just our own research, but actually from uh, the Health Management Information System. So this is Ministry of Health data. And they have realized over time that there are certain things that cause death amongst ch children of different ages. So those children that are below the age of five, why do we lose those children? Predictably, there is malaria, pneumonia, anemia, sepsis, and perinatal cause, so uh, causes around birth uh, once you've taken away this five, the next reason why we lose children under the age of five is injuries. It's a big surprise because most people who think about injury, who think about children, are thinking in terms of communicable diseases. They're thinking in terms of diarrhea. They're thinking infections. Infections of some sort. They're even thinking malnutrition. Guess what? The sixth reason we lose children in hospitals and health facilities is injuries. So for that reason, we need to really pay attention and figure out how we can prevent them and how we can treat them well if they should occur. So um, what are some of the causes of these, these injuries? Because uh, earlier you, you broken, you, you've broken down these injuries, but what are some of the causes? So I talked about those that are a result of road traffic, but for the focus actually on the, on the uh, world day of the, the African child we were talking about, we were focusing on those that happen in the home. So we did not talk about road traffic crashes on that day. So if I focus on those ones, I can tell you the big ones. So they're going to be falls, especially amongst the very young. They fall off triple deckers. You know these days people have beds stacked up. Yeah. They fall off balconies, they fall off porches, they fall downstairs, they fall out of mango trees, they fall out of, they fall out of many places. Is it really a threat? Because when you talk about falls, in Buganda here, they even have a saying that you know me you know me Yeah, so it's, it's as if some, it's it's, normal it's, yeah, something normal. Well, guess what? It is a cause of not just a minor injury, they cause serious injuries, they cause deaths. Most of the deaths as a result of falls are because the child falls and hits their head first. So they might crack the joint between their head and neck, or they might actually hit their head so hard that they bleed into their brain and they die. They may not die instantly, they may die you know, over the next several hours, but falls are a big problem for children. And when we anticipate them, when we look at the environment, then we can say this is an area where a child could fall and we should fix it. So we have falls, that's a big one. Yeah. We have burns. I think burns nobody is surprised by because we've seen many reports in the media about burns. But even our own data shows that burns is a big problem. So there are two types of burns mainly. There are those that result from a fire mm. and there are those that result from hot liquids. Both those are dangerous for kids. So a child could run into a boiling pot and porridge or water or whatever for, you know uh, doses them and, and so the child will suffer severe burns and uh, unfortunately you know in, in, in that instant when the child suffers a burn it might seem like a, like a minor thing a lot of children die as a result of burns or they suffer such serious burns that they retain, uh, they retain scars for the rest of their lives, or they might lose fingers, they might lose an arm, so they might actually have a disability for the rest of their lives. So we have falls, burns. Uh, I would add cuts, serious cuts. I would add poisoning. Children take all Maybe, uh, things. doctor, uh, I'll, I'll take you a bit back to the burns. Uh, because you talked about the burns that result from maybe taking hot liquids or what. I, I imagine if a mother or a caretaker gives this young child uh, hot, hot, hot tea or hot food, is, are those the types of the kinds of burns you're talking about? No, I'm talking. Oh, those about ones are minor. 
those are relatively minor and quite often the child, you know, if the food is too hot, the child might put their hand in and pull it out. They, it might lead to a minor burn and the amounts are not too much. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about a child, a toddler pulling a kettle that is boiling off a table. I'm talking about a child uh, heating a big pot of porridge or water that's boiling. So those are serious scouts. The volume of the liquid is sufficient and also the temperature at which the liquid is. And then I'm also talking about burns that result from, for instance, a burning mosquito net. Mm. People who use, do you know Tadora? Yeah. Candles. Yeah. They, they, can, uh, they, can, they can burn a mosquito net, they can burn a blanket, they can catch... Or even a mattress. A lot of things, mattress, they can, a lot of things can catch fire from that. Curtains. And in a very short period of time, a child is surrounded by smoke and fire. And the burn, the, the danger to the child might be the fire itself, but it can also be that they inhale the smoke from that. And Which is also those dangerous. are quite dangerous, yes. So those are the burns that I'm talking about. Um, then you're talking about the other causes? I'm talking about poisoning. This yeah. is a common one as well. So when a lot of people seem to to forget that children are actually not small adults. Mm -hmm. That children view the world from much lower than we view it. <laughs> so when you hide something behind a chair, you're hiding it from an adult's eyes, mm -hmm. but you're putting it right where a, a child, child that's crawling see. will see it. So they pick up washing things, they pick up detergent, they pick up kerosene, they pick up medicines. There are a lot of medicines. These days with the pandemic, there's a lot of um, self-medication. People have medicines yes. of all sorts in their homes. Yeah. And unfortunately... Whatever comes in, they try it out. Unfortunately, the medicines that we buy from pharmacies come in small, flimsy paper things. Mm -hmm. So a child can chew through the paper or can tear the paper and get up the tablets. Quite often, they are colorful things and they just pop them into their mouths. And some are tasty, like vitamin C. <laughs> some, are, some are tasty, but even those that are not, you'd be amazed that children actually will swallow bitter things. And they don't need to take a lot to, to suffer poisoning. You know, and a full adult dose of, for instance, two panadols that are 500 milligram each, if a tiny baby take it, takes it, for them that's an overdose. So we need to keep in mind where we place things and whether children might have access to them and take them, and that would be poisoning. Uh, we also get uh, drowning, and many people think that you need an entire swimming pool to drown. Unfortunately, small babies can drown in a bucket, they can drown in a bathtub. There, there are many construction sites where they dig big holes yeah. at the site and they fill them with water. And these are hazardous for children. So if you have a construction site and you have filled this big um, uh, pit with water, drain it when you've finished working because otherwise a small child will fall in and they die silently. They and just, I think they can even drown in ditches. They drown in ditches, yeah. they drown in rice paddies, children drown in many places where we would not expect them to drown because you don't need a, a large amount of water to drown. You just need enough water that a child who falls face down will have will begin to take small amounts of water and once they get into their lungs, they begin to drown. So drowning is another, unfortunately, becoming another common reason that we lose children. Doctor, uh, let's go shortly for a commercial break, but we are coming back shortly. As you think about the Lord just taking over your case and you are no longer in the midst of it, and he says, fear not. Okay. Demons from the mountains scream, scream and leave. In the name of Demons the from the from the graves scream and leave. In the name, the name of Jesus.
welcome back from the commercial break. This is Health Port. This program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health. And today, in commemoration of the World Day of the African Child, we, because this day was celebrated on Wednesday, and we come today with Dr. Olive Kobsinger, who is taking us through the unintentional injuries um, among children below five years. And that is what we are looking at today. Doctor, before we went for the commercial break, you were telling us you are breaking down some of these injuries. And then one of them was drowning. But then there is a tendency of some mothers, especially um, to these young ones who are learning how to sit. So a mother gets this basin, they put their water, and then they make this child sit in that water, and then they'll start playing with the water. How do you advise on that? Is it, is it, is it okay? Uh, so, unfortunately, this is not okay. So, a small baby who's learning how to sit, you're talking about five months, six yes, months. Yes. These are the babies that can drown in two inches of water. And unfortunately, we've had many such stories that uh, a mother who prepare bath water for the child, leave the child there, dash into the bedroom, maybe to pick a towel, get a phone call, or something else happens, she gets distracted, and over the next five minutes, she doesn't, she comes back and that child is dead in the water. This is not a rare occurrence. Don't leave water with small babies. Always have the baby, have, have the baby with you as you put them in the water. And if you must leave, leave with the baby. Don't leave the baby in the presence of a bucket or a basin. And then you leave and go to the shop to buy soap. They remember, I don't have soap. Then they leave the baby there with water. Bad idea. Bad idea. So, so the thing is, a lot of mothers, we tend to think mothers who are negligent. We tend to blame the maids. Where were they looking? Actually, it is human. So that is why we, we emphasize fixing the environment and not focusing on the individual. So for instance, if you're going to bathe the child, you've maybe um, organized where you usually bathe the child, what time you bathe the child, but think about all of the things you're going to need so that once that activity begins, you have no reason to go away. If you must go away, go with the baby. The baby is a small person that you carry with you. Don't leave the baby behind. Better still, make it in such a way that your water maybe comes out of a out of a, a shower head or something so that it's not water that's going to collect in a basin. I can well understand that not all families are going to have this. So some of us are going to use basins with water in them. And actually for very small babies, most people find that helpful because then you can test the temperature of the baby so that you don't ever put the baby in water that is too hot for them. But the point is to remember that sitting a baby next to or in water and you walk away is a dangerous practice. And Doctor, there is a lot of material you've produced that is circulating on social media that gives precaution on how mothers right. can, can handle uh, or can prevent such injuries. Right. Can you try uh, to take us through some of these? Yeah, so beginning with the Day of the African Child, actually we started two days before that, we decided that we would spend this period for the next 12 days, so we've run about a half of that period, yes. um, putting out these messages. They were based on research that we did in Jinja uh, on unintentional injuries in homes for children under the age of five. And so all of the lessons that we learned from there, we are trying to now give back and let families, let parents, let people that, watch, that look after children know the kinds of things that hurt babies children and what they can do to prevent them. So you might have seen, for instance, on Twitter, on, uh, on Facebook, uh, on some WhatsApp groups, on Instagram, um, very simple um, messages in, in graphic form that tell parents, tell caregivers what to do and what not to do. So that's, that's the messaging. Watch out for children, um, improve the environment so they are not at risk of these kinds of injuries that we've been talking about. Yeah, so that's the campaign. Oh, because uh, actually, what I'm looking at here is you breaking some of these messages down to our viewers who might not have gotten a chance of reading these messages. Right. So, 
Uh, we have messages about, um, I said one of the, the injuries is cuts. So we have messages about keeping items that would hurt children out of reach. So knives, pangas, things that you know a child, a small Laser children, blades. yeah, blades that a child could touch, could get a hold of it and could end up with an injury. So store them safely. So we have a mes messaging on that. We have messaging on burns, uh, on putting uh, your cooking out of reach of children. So you might be able to build something or place uh, your charcoal stove. There are charcoal stoves that are safe these days, that are safer than they used to be, where you don't actually see the charcoals. They are inside there. And your saucepan sits in a space where it is not easy to tip. So we have messaging on that. We have messaging on falls. So building um, building uh, guardrails so that, for instance, a small child will not simply fall off uh, a bed or fall off a set of stairs or a balcony. Uh, and we're going to keep passing. I may be drying the, the, the floor. So that they don't sleep. My, exactly. Minding the floor, not leaving children in places that are wet, uh, they will sleep and fall. And as I said, head injury in children, unfortunately common. Unfortunately, not, not, you know, mothers not really being aware of how dangerous it is. So we are going to be passing this kind of messaging and hoping that from those that see it, it goes even further. Because, uh, Doctor, there is also another challenge where a mother places this baby on, on, on the bed. And then when this baby wakes up eventually, they'll try to find their way out of bed. And then they end up falling. What advice would you give to such mothers? So first, the bed on which you place the baby. Mm. You know, beds are such a natural for grown-ups because we are much higher. We don't really realize that if a small person is lying on the bed and if they can't step off the bed but they just roll off it, they are going to be falling sometimes close to a meter. And if they are even higher, that height that is a dead weight, a baby just simply rolls off and hits the floor, they're going to be hurt. So we have suggestions. We have suggestions on having a guardrail on the bed so that a baby cannot roll off that bed we also have suggestions about placing a soft mat so that should the baby ever roll off it, they are not falling on a hard floor. So while you might emphasize supervision, usually once a baby is asleep, mothers tend to use that opportunity to do other things. Yes. So have the, have the baby in such a way that they can never roll off the bed and fall. But should they ever climb out of there, the surface they hit is not too hard. So Doctor, as we wind up, is there any first aid that you can tell mothers to do well, for, for example if a child falls or a baby falls and then they have this swelling part of their head or they have mothers tend to massage it roughly so that it doesn't that the swell doesn't grow bigger well let's start with the falls and a, a, a child hurting their head yes. i think the first the most important thing is for a mother to realize when this is not just a minor fall but when it is one that that could have actually happened can a, a mother tell right so a mother can tell if a child falls and they don't cry immediately that is unnatural for a child they might actually have had a, a serious uh, head injury or if they begin to, uh, to cry abnormally and every mother knows what is a normal cry for their child or if they in Uganda they say as this is it the child is unconscious. unconscious even if it is for a small amount of time you need that child examined by a doctor or if the child begins to throw up or if it was a child that already had some speech if they are not speaking so if something unusual is happening around the child that had a fall. Surprisingly, very many of our mothers think if you don't give this child attention, they will not cry. If you give them attention, that's when they will cry. No, 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 no. So, uh, as I said, mothers know when a baby is fussing and when a baby is crying abnormally. Unfortunately, it might not be the mother. It might be maybe a maid or somebody else. So if you see any of those signs, take the baby and have a doctor look at the baby. Another thing that I would tell mothers and other caretakers is about burns. When a child burns, don't put sugar, don't put oil, don't put egg, put cold water. We always say cool the burn. That is the most important thing that you do. As soon as you discover a burn, as soon as you remove whatever is causing the burn, 
cool the burn. Put cold water and run it over the burn for maybe two, three minutes. Because once the burn starts happening, the heat keeps sinking further into the body. So you want to make sure that the heat stops right there and you give opportunity for the skin to recover. So once you've done that, you've cooled the burn, then if it's you know bigger than the baby's hand, that that baby is going to need to see a doctor right away. Or if it is on the face, on the hands, on any joint, these are key areas that will not heal easily. You want to really make sure that the child is seen by a doctor. Don't keep the child at home. Doctor, thank you so much. We are indeed grateful for having hosted you today in Health It was Court. my pleasure. Yeah, we are indeed grateful. Thank you so much thank for you this time. Yes. And then thank you so much, you the viewers, you who have been with us, you who we started with. Remember, this is Health Port. This program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health. And our area of concern is maternal health and early childhood development. What we are talking about today is early childhood development. Let us not take things for granted. Some things don't just happen. But let us always make hospitals uh, places where we can get knowledge and information. Sometimes we don't get correct information from the community. We just need to go to the specialists in the health department to help us out. Edwin Austin Mokalazi is my name. Last week we promised you to come back with Dr. Olive Namuga today, but because we had to bring in this important topic, we shall have Dr. Olive Namuga next week. And today I work with Jonah Jao, the producer, together with Brenda T. Jakira, Bantam in transmission, and then Tony Santo on social media, Makere University School of Public Health, together with Dr. Olive Kovsinje, Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name. Good night.